it's Andy again with another part of my journey into learning this board. Um, things are getting exciting now. We're going to get the temperature and humidity readings on the screen, which has been a long time coming because I've had so much to learn. And uh, while we talk about learning, if anyone happens to find this video that actually knows how to program Arduinos or the ESP8266, if they see me doing anything wrong, because this is a journey of discovery for me, for me, I'm not a coder, I'm not professional, I've only been doing this a few weeks, and I only started because I ordered this board, and I couldn't get the software to work. So I'm learning Arduino, we're learning together, um, about how to, to make the Arduino work. And now the exciting part is we're actually going to get it to do something useful <laughs> rather than just scrolling text across the screen. So this is the bit of code that I've hashed together. And we're going to first of all check that you've got the right libraries installed. So you should have had uh, the, SI, the Adafruit SSD1306 library installed. But we need to make sure you've got the sense library installed. So the way we do that, we go up to include library, library manager, wait for it to download the updates. And then at the top, we're going to put adafruit sensor. And we're going to go down the bottom, because I know it's down the bottom somewhere. And we are going to find the right library. Now, I've already got it installed, but you may not have it installed. Ha, ah, here it is. Adafruit Unified uh, Sensor. Now, I've got it installed. You will, you, you will have a, an install box over here, because you haven't got it. So just press the little box over here and get it installed and that will make sure that we are working in unison so now the uh, wire library and the dht i believe they are standard libraries and that's why they're in red i can't quite confirm that at the moment but i'm sure that's what it means so the rest of the sketch now is going to be the same here we're defining the size of the screen here we've set up some integer values because in the last video we learnt how to put, I believe that these are called integer, uh, they're not variables, they're integers, they're numbers. So we're assigning uh, set text size 1 and that's going to equal 1. So when we use this in the code below, it's going to equal these values, but we, we can show you that in a minute. So this we need to uh, declare to make the library work that the Adafruit have supplied. So we need to put in um, four of these values. So the screen width is 128 here. Uh, the screen height is 64. And wire. I don't know why and wire is there. But I'll, it's part of the library. And the minus one is because the screen itself has no reset pin. Here we define where our sensor is plugged into the board and we are plugged into pin 5. Here we select which sensor we're using. Now in this example I'm using the blue sensor which is a DH211. So we make sure we're uncommented here. Now if you had the white sensor, and I do have one here somewhere, let me just open this little packet. I do have a white sensor and if you was using that one because it works slightly differently you need to tell the program in in this area here that you would be using the DH222 and in another video or on my blog post I'll cover what the difference is, is between the DH211 and the 12 and basically it's the accuracy of the readings the temperature range of the readings and how many readings per second the units can take and I believe the blue one is slightly smaller in physical size than the DH2, uh, DHT22 I'm not sure what the DH221 looks like but I'm sure it's very similar to the DHT22 so here we have to set up the sensor so we're saying uh, because of 
that's what the libraries are required so here we're saying that the pin is 5 and the center type is the H211 then we're setting up the void loop the serial begin this is to make sure the serial monitor works and we can see that working shortly this is the special law I call it special this is the line of code that I found that I needed to add because our DSA pins and CSL pins are not standard so we're telling the libraries to go and look on these pins rather than the standard pins here now we start the display this I still haven't quite worked out what it's doing but I know it will give you an error if it doesn't look up the right address of the screen and I can't I haven't been able to make it fault because I haven't got a screen with a different address so once I do we'll come back and revisit this and learn exactly what we're doing these two lines are copied out because in the previous video with these lines in you would get the Adafruit splash screen and, and this time I'm not going to have the Adafruit splash screen up so here then we display the uh, uh, we clear the display we need to set a text color for the library and that's the end of the void setup so now we're going to do the void loop which is the part that's going to loop around all the time so in the last video I just set its delay one second because I thought you know I'm just going to update the display one second well that's absolutely correct because I looked at the data sheet of the DH211 and it has a refresh rate of one megahertz I think it was which means it, it's capable of refreshing once a second so delaying once a second is good you couldn't make it delay half a second because then that's quicker than the refresh rate of the sensor and I'm sure something would start failing if you were trying to refresh quicker than the sensor could actually put the new data out so here is some um, new code float means that we want to record a decimal number so something like 24.40 degrees and uh, we are saying float t so we're saying store a value with decimal points in the what is this called is this is an in uh, no this is a variable so this variable t is going to hold four digits in the decimal point and the way we get that reading because of the wire the dht library it's you just equal it to to dht dot read temperature blah 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 and it's going to read the temperature into the variable t same for the humidity with that code now this one it, it will um, if the code if the library cannot retrieve a sensible value from the sensor it will put on the serial monitor fail to read from the h2 sensor and we can test that um, when we get the code um, working so here we're going to do um, clear the display and then this is what we've learnt before this is our setting where we want to print text um, and what text size so here we're saying display text size text size equals one so that's going to be small text because up above remember we set text size 1 to 1 and text size 2 to 2 which is the larger font and these screens can actually do 6 fonts now I haven't played around with all 6 fonts because I've been so so eager to get temperature displayed on the screen but we, we, can, we can have a play with that at another time uh, so then we're going to set the cursor position print temperature the MIDI sensor just as the title for the display then we're going to change to a bigger text move the cursor and print uh, t colon space and then after that space we're going to print the value held in t then we're going to print a blank line and then we have changed back to the small text now this i found again it's this is the libraries doing the work if you put this command in print 
uh, sorry, display.cp437 true, it will print a small zero in front of the letter C. And the C is being printed here. So this is a a way of selecting a different font like you would do in a word processor because we want to print the very small O and that would be classed as subscript because it's up above the, the character and, and again we'll see that when we get the screen working so then we're going to change the text size back and print a big C say pretty much for the same for the humidity uh, we're going to move the curve change the text size to two um, I'm not sure we actually have to do that because it's actually set up here so this line is probably actually not needed so then we move the cursor print H uh, colon space and then print the value held in H after it and then print the percent sign these lines here I added because it, this will put information on the serial monitor so if you were not seeing any readings on the screen for whatever reason this would if the temperature sensor was working and the humidity sensor was working this would give you values on the humidity sensor at least then you would know that your sensor is working and you got a fault with the screen so once we asked it to do all this we have to remember add this line at the bottom display display to actually put the information on the display so if that is all okay let's upload it so remember the board is the D was the Wemos D1 R1 and you can just pause the video here to make sure you've got the same settings as me and I've left them all standard now remember your COM port may be different to mine if you have already got your sensor plugged in and you get a list like I do it's likely to be five or six but if you're not sure, unplug the sensor, one COM port will disappear, plug it back in, the COM sensor will, that the board's plugged in, it will pop back up after you hear that ding ding, and that you need to select that board. So, that is it. So, we can now get rid of that, press upload. So, down here you can see it says compiling sketch, which I did before. Uh, the video started so I knew the code was right so and here it says connecting to COM6 this is always good to see in percentage sign so that means it's uploading if we look down at the screen now hey there <laughs> look at that absolutely fantastic so it says uh, temp and humid sensor and it's printing some information so we've got the damn thing working I'm so chuffed <laughs> it's one small step for man and all that so it's doing exactly what we've asked it to do and that that's the most important thing and at the moment except for one or two small parts of the code which is this 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 code why we have to include the wire and then there was one other this this bit that it says if the screen's going to fail you're going to print something on the serial screen now let's look at the serial monitor that we because we haven't done that go up to tools click down serial monitor and make sure your board rate is on 9600 and you can see here once a second it's printing out the same information is on the screen strange enough because they are communicating communicating to one another so let's just leave this up on the screen and go back down on the code because we had this line here if insan h I think that is and in or and or in san t so that's the values of h and the values of t if they don't equal something that the library is um, expecting then print on the serial monitor fail to read the ht now i'm just going to pull out my blue temperature sensor now i would never recommend to do this but in the quest for learning and science I'm going to do it so I'm expecting to see on the screen and see on the um, serial monitor the failure warning come up so there it is it's unplugged it will take a few minutes because the code need to cycle around once every second 
and there we go on both um, the serial monitor and the screen it's it the code is still running because it's still looping but every time it looks down here where, where the sensor was plugged in it's now not there so it's it's flashing up uh, NAN N -A -N, which means it's a stupid reading and it's not going to display anything so I'm going to plug it in back in now remember uh, these boards have uh, minus a positive and negative and you need to plug it in the right way now I know the board goes back in this way so there it is plug back in give it a second and it's back up so let's just touch the sensor and we should get some readings going up there we go so it's actually doing something wonderful oh, I feel relieved that it's worked um, so our journey has well our journey has got somewhere we, we've actually got the board working um, which is great and we've got the temperature humidity displayed on there we understand 99% stand understand how it got on there and what we're doing so the next thing is Wi-Fi which I think is going to be a big challenge um, then Wi-Fi and possibly getting it this the, the temperature displayed on a mobile phone so I think that will involve some web pages now I know we can use uh, other applications like third party uh, applications like uh, what's it thing speak is one of them but I don't really want to do that because I, I want to be able to control what I'm doing without using somebody else's program server environment I'm not sure what that they call that but I know there's quite a few of those out there so what I'm going to do um, over the next few weeks is learn how to get this chip because it is Wi-Fi enabled onto my home Wi-Fi find out the IP address of said board and then find out how to make this chip either write information to a web page or make the chip a server and I think that that's the easier route if you make it a server there's libraries that will just serve give the information to a set um, domain so I don't want to confuse you I know where I'm going I'm not sure how to do it at the moment so give me a few weeks a few days depending <laughs> how much time I can spend on this because it's obviously not my full-time job it's a, it's a hobby uh, and it's a learning a big learning curve so let's learn together I would welcome any comments in the video um, and I'd really like to know if anyone's following along with these videos and um, getting some information <laughs> from them and found it useful because at the moment I'm just chatting to myself into a microphone um, but I'll be so chuffed if I've helped one person because when I first got this board I was stuck you know I couldn't get anything working from the code well that's not I didn't want to load all the the um, the environments that came with the Banggood stuff I didn't want to load that on I wanted to use the Arduino and that's bringing me on to an, a, another subject would be another video there's another programming environment I'm I'm trying to run now before I can walk there's 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 another program environment that I found that I'm, I've dabbled and I'm really liking but I can't I need to understand it before I do a video because I don't want to be um and an R in and pressing the wrong buttons all the time so in, a, in, in the next few videos I may be changing the program environment so at the moment we're using the Arduino IDE environment but we may be changing systems now no one likes change because <laughs> we're only just learning what we're learning here but maybe it's a good place to change right at the beginning so we learn something that's potentially a lot better and a lot easier it, it, it helps us pick up the mistakes because I have been dabbling to try to add extra code into my programs and what I can't work out is 
getting the curly braces in the right place uh, it's really testing me and um, I need to get that sorted out so I'm waffling tell me to stop waffling I'm going to go now I'm going to upload this video get a blog post together um, but I hope you're happy that we've got the temperature and humidity on our screen because I'm really happy so this is Andy now signing out good afternoon